Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this video, we're jumping straight into SPAD.next and getting into the new configuration for the Bravo Throttle. Version 0.9.12 was released, now currently on 0.92 for the build. With this, there were some changes even to the video that we showed during the alpha phase. So the first thing you wanna do when you come here into spad.next is make sure that you see the joysticks. Uh, if you don't have the controls icon, there's a good chance it is disabled. So for that, we go to settings, devices, and under joysticks, you wanna make sure that joystick support has been enabled. There is a chance if you had an older version after the upgrade, it wasn't on, or when you loaded something, uh, the setting didn't get selected. With that, you are going to enable its support and anything that classifies itself as a joystick will show up. If you want, you can disable support for a specific device so it doesn't show up. Maybe with your rudders, since those don't really change and you left them in Microsoft Flight Sim, you don't want to even bother seeing them here and accidentally double mapping. So you could disable this device so it leaves it alone. Down here, you can see that I have my Bravo Throttle Quadrant support enabled. You'll also note that you cannot configure this device any longer. It used to be you could make changes to buttons and switches when it was a generic joystick. Now that it's not, there is a specific layout and that also ensures that all device snippets that you download and profiles will all configure correctly. Okay, now that you've done this, if it wasn't set, make sure to close the application, closing the X, and restarting it. That way, when it comes up, we'll have the controls available to us. Heading over to the controls, we're going to come in. Now, I renamed my Bravo, renamed device, and gave it a higher sort, sort order. That way, it would be at the top of my list. Note, if you make changes to the sort order in this way, you do have to close and restart spad.next for the sort order to take place. I'll do this sometimes because I might be working on a specific device and it just saves me time. Hence, I usually leave device one open uh, so I can always change them back to a one and it shows up. Now, what's new as well is previously there used to be sometimes multiple tabs for the same device. Same thing goes for the TCA. There are now sub tabs. Under the Bravo, you'll now have three separate sections. There's the throttle quadrant section, which includes all the buttons that live on the throttle quadrant, as well as there's an autopilot and switches section so those live on the upper portion of the device. And then you've got the enunciators for all of the enunciators that are kind of in the middle. So with all these, it makes up your three sections. So let's go ahead and bring in the throttle quadrant camera so we can see a little bit more understanding what we're talking about. Now, these buttons can operate differently based on which handles you have connected to the system. Now to start off, normally with a four engine shirt, this would be the speed brake, but I wanted to be able to show that on this axis, when you have the go around button throttle, when you click on it, you'll see that that is button 29. Now at the same time, this throttle or the second axis when you have it with the button, the toga button on the handle, you'll see that also triggers button 29. So you're going to see as we go through this, there are some buttons that are actually the same. And that's how they reduce the overall button count uh, based on which handles you have connected. So you just have to be aware that some of these handles, so like this one here, only has two connections. So obviously a ground and a switch. However, this throttle, we're gonna see has 
three connections, a ground and two separate switches. And depending which handle you put on here, it'll be a different button. So the Airbus auto throttle toga button, whatever you want to call it, it's not really toga, it's auto throttle disconnect, that's actually going to be a different button. So this is 29 and the thrust reverser is nine. Now what we understand is Airbus handles, which I don't have, those are actually reversed. So just keep in mind, it depends on what handles you have connected. Also a great reason why you make a profile for each plane. Makes it a lot easier to control those things. So when we've got the four throttles connected, you're gonna see that each of the thrust reversers show up in the UI as 9, 10, 11, and 12. So that's where those buttons show up. Then you're gonna see that as you come along, every single one of these detents has a button and it starts at 24. And the reason that it starts at 24 is the trim wheel is 22 and 23. So 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and sure enough, that jumps all the way to 33 because 29 and 30 are being used for these throttle toga go around buttons. 30 is also being used and so is 48. So now what we're gonna do is pull off a bunch of these handles and move them around so you can see what the buttons trigger. So now that we have the handles off, you can see that on the first one, you only have two connectors. That means there is one button uh, to be pressed. So when we use the uh, GA throttle, you'll see that the toga button is on 29. If we pull that off and we put the throttle for the Boeing, you'll see that the toga button down here does nothing. But if you move the thrust reverser, 29 will go off. So you can see which one is controlling which item. Now if we move the GA throttle here and use the toga button, you'll see that's triggering nine or what would be the thrust reverser on the Boeing throttle. Now generally you're gonna have the other throttle here if you were doing twin engine GA with props and so you wouldn't have anything pressing that button. Now when we come to the next switch, you might use this here because you're using something like the DA42 and you wanted the black handles instead of say the Boeing handles. You'll notice here that that is going to trigger button 10. So basically the GA throttle control button is connecting to the top switch which on each of these placements 11 and this one is triggering 12. So as you can see controlling any and all of throttle reversers. Because this also only has two points, if it has the flap reverser, that's gonna set that off. You'll notice where the flap or the final detent furthest to the right, there are no contacts, so there are no button placements there. If we were to have this on the second one where we saw it before, course number nine, and number 29, which is shared here and here. Then we come here, obviously that's gonna be 10, and now you get button 30. So 29 is the button for the first two, 30 goes to this one. If we move this over by one, you'll see button 48. So if you have a second handle and the rightmost button here, that is going to trigger 48. And then of course, when we come over to this position, that button will do nothing because only number 12, which is the throttle reverser, is available. So hopefully that explains how all those buttons work and where they all show up. Uh, and I agree, it is funny that button 33 uh, is here as opposed to them just 
keeping it sequential and moving 29, 30 uh, off to the right hand side. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section, the autopilot and switches. So as you can see from the top, you can click on the separate sub tab. Now this is going to depict the buttons and switches in a little bit better presentation. Uh, obviously it's pretty straightforward what you're going to find with the displays and buttons. With the altitude or device selector switch, uh, this switches between the different modes and you can see which position it's in update in the UI. Now this doesn't actually do anything. You still have to either A, assign events here. Sometimes you'll see in my profiles and snippets, I'll have this actually using text-to-speech to tell me what position I've moved the selector into. Or you could choose this to control a local variable to set for deciding what you're going to do with, say, the encoder on the far right. Now, you can also just use the switch position, which is what you'll see as I have done. We'll just bring in the video so you can see. But you do have the ability to also control the LEDs. When you click on the heading button, here you're going to see that you get your events including button light LED changes. Uh, to do those things, you add an event uh, and you have all the different button types. We've covered this in a separate video. Uh, pressed is the moment you press it. Pressed short is an event that is looking for it to be pressed and held for less than a quarter of a second. So a quick press. The long press is looking for it to be held for one second. Now this is adjustable in your settings. It's a global long press value. So you'd hold it for longer than one second. Note, multiple events can be assigned at the same time. So if I want to have something that on a short press does one thing, but on a long press does something else, well, then I use short and long. Note that if you use button pressed in conjunction with any of these, this will fire the moment it's pressed and the other types will still function as well. Button release gets used usually in conjunction with button pressed, so you have a pressed and you have a when button release, so great for a push to talk. Button held is used when you want to be able to send repeat events. You might still want to assign the same event with a pressed and then duplicate it, change the trigger type, to a button held and adjust the button held. Again, we've covered this in other videos. There are new system events, so do something when profile loaded, do something when aircraft changed, do something when flight is started, uh, do something when SPAD needs your attention. And of course, you can add scripted events anywhere you like, so they travel around with the device in snippets and profiles. Over here with the encoder, here we get the ability to assign numerous events and doing so because we're checking the location of the switch on the far side. That switch is buttons 17 through 21. And here you'll see it's controlling airspeed when it's 17. So the rotary switch at the bottom is button 17. Then in course mode, that's 18. Heading is 19. Vertical speed is 20, and 21 is when it's in the altitude position. So here we used a condition for the button press, or clockwise turn we should say, and what it's going to do with an end processing, so it doesn't search through anything else. Again, we've covered how you do this in other videos. Uh, this one is more about orientation of how the Bravo configuration looks. The gear up down, so you have a up and down position and then the events you can send. You have LEDs for the gear lights, being able to set up what triggers those LEDs. And then all of the switches have a on and off position for your rocker switch. Flaps has a flaps up and again you can have short presses, quick presses, long presses and you have the flaps down position. Now the enunciators are just LEDs, so it follows that same premise that when adding event, you'll see change button light 
Um, obviously, it's not a button. It's just an LED, uh, but it's common nomenclature because you might have something that was triggering a different LED or a different button, uh, and they'll contain it all. Obviously, these are going to reflect the plates because those plates on it are not replaceable. Uh, so that's the name of it. But you can map any kind of functionality that you'd like. So here, for example, in the Mustang, we don't have an auxiliary power unit. So instead, we're using it to show if we have ground power with the external power function. Now, what's nice is you can go to the online snippets. And when you click on that, it, of course, is going to bring up uh, individual enunciators, individual buttons, or you can go look for a complete device. Now, one thing that you will find which is kind of useful is there is a LEDs only. So here is, depending whose you want to use, uh, this is the standard ones that would match what Honeycomb did. Uh, here is a Bravo LEDs uh, single engine that I did, which only works for a single engine plane. Uh, it is very specific. Now, what's nice about these is you can recall these because these have nothing else assigned to the other sections. So when you recall this, you don't do a replace all, you do the uh, add or m migrate. So if I was to click on this, it's going to say, do you want all events? And you don't want to replace all, you would hit no. And no would add these to your existing assignments and therefore leave all your other buttons and switches alone and then add these here. Obviously, if you use somebody else's profile, which does, or snippet, which does have other buttons and switches, you could still hit no. You're just going to have to then go back to all those buttons and maybe delete events that you didn't program to them. Okay, well, that's going to do it for this one. I hope it explains what we've been doing with the Bravo and how you can go ahead and set it up now that we've got 9.0, or sorry, 0.9.12 official release. As always, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along with us next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.